Good morning all. In my shed I have a 24 volt battery and also a 12 volt uh, high power device. It's a cryptocurrency miner. It draws 300 watts at 12 volts. Hmm, what's that in current? Um, it's 300 divided by 12 which is ooh, 25 amps. Yes, that's quite a lot of amps. And so I'm using this thing, um, which is rated 24 volts in with a range of 15 to 40. And the output is 12 volts, 30 amps. And uh, yeah, this thing works fine. It gets quite warm. Unfortunately, I can't see what's inside this because it's completely potted. But these are around 20 pounds, I think. Let me just check. Uh, yeah, this one was £19.99 on eBay. Now, I do need more of these because as I scale the system up, I want to, rather than get bigger ones of these, I'm not sure these go much bigger, actually, uh, just have multiples of them because that works because the cryptocurrency miner actually has multiple hashing cards, which you could drive independently from multiple power supplies. But because of the price of these, I was looking for alternatives and I found this, which says on it, power supply conversion device, DC 24 to DC 12 volts, output 30 amps, maximum $7.60 or something. So what's that, about five pounds, <laughs> really cheap. But is this up to the job of supplying 30 amps at 12 volts? Um, the immediate advantage of this is that it looks like it all comes apart. So we can have a look inside, see what's inside here. It's actually got some extra wires. It's got yellow and black um, for the high power and then red and black. And there's this rather confusing diagram on here with ACK for accessory for the red going in and REM for what? Remote for the red coming out. Um, this is all to do with car audio and I don't know much about car audio. Um, but my first concern with this is the wires. They do look quite a bit thinner than the wires on this device, which I know can handle at least 25 amps. Yeah, these are quite a bit thinner. Um, I might just go and get a lighter, actually. Because people do say, don't they, watch out for copper-coated aluminium. So let's heat this up. Aluminium, if it gets hot, generally just melts and collapses that's not melting and collapsing so that the insulation there is getting very hot so that does look like it's uh, copper tinned copper and just for comparison this is copper coated aluminium wire so let's try this and yeah it just falls down goes limp so yeah you can tell the difference between copper and aluminium now as for the conductor thickness, it's a bit tricky to see because I've soldered the big one into um, an XT90. But I think you can see there that there is substantial more wire thickness on the more expensive unit. And the wires on the cheap $7 unit are pretty thin. Right, there are screws all over this unit, so it should be relatively easy to get it apart, I think it's uh, take out those for this top plate and similarly these. Let's get the top plate out and see what's inside. Right, let's lift this lid off. Oh, there it is. And, oh, <laughs> not a lot in there, is there? Actually, there's really nothing in here, is there? There's. Um, well, this is a five pin device here. I'll get the number off that in a moment. Uh, there's another device here, which I believe, I can't see very well, but it's probably three pins. Oh no, I can't see the bottom yet. I'll take the bottom panel off in a moment. And we got um, a couple of electrolytic capacitors here and a couple more here. These ones are 220 microfarads and the black ones are 100 microfarads. I think everything's at 35 volts. Uh, modest size inductor here, but is that really up to 30 amps? And there's also um, a diode here, quite a chunky looking diode. We'll have to have a look at what that is. I think I'll take the bottom off and just have a look at the underside of this PCB. Rather an old school SRBP PCB here. 
It looks a bit cheap, doesn't it? And the final screw is hidden under this quality label. I wonder how much quality there really is in here. Oh, okay, well, reasonably wide traces, but there's no attempt to beef up these traces in any way. There's really nothing much in here, is there? <laughs> Do you know, I think I've made up my mind about this already. I just don't think this is rated for 30 amps. Looking at these wires, my initial impression was, oh, I think I'd downrate that to about 15 amps max. Looking at that inductor, looking at this single device here, although there is a device there which might be a diode or something. We'll have a look at that. Um, I'm now thinking, I don't think this could manage more than about 10 amps, quite frankly. In fact, I'm going to undo these screws holding these two devices in and drop the whole board out, I think. Right, this is out and, well, it's even worse than I thought. That three pin device over there is a 7812. So that's just a linear 12 volt regulator. And it looks to me like ACK IN runs round here to the input of that regulator and then ACK OUT, the other red, comes off the output of that regulator and two of these electrolytic capacitors, these uh, smaller ones, 100 mic, are sitting across the input and output of this 7812 respectively. So all we have here is a 12 volt linear regulator with the red going into it and the other red coming out of it as an entirely separate circuit it looks like. So all that's left for the switch mode circuit, two tiny resistors here, two modest capacitors, 220 mic, this diode, let's have a look at what that is. Oh, well that's nothing special either. That's a 1N5822. I'm just gonna look up a 1N5822. Uh, this is a three amp Schottky diode. So you've got the back end of that, which is the anode, isn't it, on ground, the cathode to the inductor and the inductor out to the yellow output. But it's only rated for three amps. So I've, I'm having to downgrade this now from 30 amps to three amps, just based on that diode. A couple of resistors here, presumably to set the, I don't know, voltage, the output voltage of the switching regulator here. Let's have a look at this and just see what horrors await us with this uh, switch mode device. Right, that's a JRC 2367-050. Oh, 2367-050, I'll just look that one up. And this is a five amp or possibly 5.5 amp high power DC to DC converter controller IC, uh, 7.5 to 40 on the input and the output presumably is set by this potential divider of these two resistors. But five amps, three amp diode, noddy wires, 30 amps, this ain't. So 30 amps, I think there's a missing decimal point here. 3.0 amps maximum. Yeah, this is a piece of trash, isn't it? So there we are, if you were hoping to find a cheap 30 amp buck converter, well this is not it. Uh, the device here is heat synced, so I mean it might withstand a bit of overcurrent for a while until this whole aluminium shell gets red hot. But this diode has no heat sinking at all, so <laughs> that's going to overheat pretty quickly I would have thought. Yeah, this is not good. So it's a piece of junk, uh, well unless you want a 3 volt regulator. Don't buy it, uh, two regulators actually, because you've got the uh, the linear regulator and the switch mode regulator. Um, I will put links to the data sheet for the switch mode device and that diode in the description below. I'll even put a link to the eBay listing so you can see which item not to buy. Cheerio!